room in New York, and even in the United Nations building, there will be time out for baseball, because autumn in New York is World Series time. In 12 of the last 13 years, New York has had a part in the Fall Classic. Eleven times in that span, the Yankees were in it, and they're in it again this year, opposed by the Cincinnati Reds, who won their first National League pennant since 1940. Fans swarm into Yankee Stadium early for the pregame excitement of a series opener. Ralph Kalk of the Yankees and Fred Hutchinson of the Reds are the opposing pilots, both managing their first pennant winners. Whitey Ford of New York and Jim O'Toole of Cincinnati will be the starting pitchers. Commissioner Ford Frick relaxes before the game as does Roger Maris, who hit 61 homers in 1961. The Reds loosen up, counteracting tension that mounts as game time nears. Soon Jim O'Toole, a youngster of only 24, starts warming up. And across the way, Whitey Ford, a 25-game winner, gets ready for action. The players come to attention for the national anthem. Yankee Hall of Famer Joe DiMaggio tosses out the first ball, and soon the Yankees take the field. The 1961 series is underway. Here's the first pitch to Don Blassingame, and it's in there for a call strike. And then with a 2-2 count, Ford pitches. Strike three. Don loses his grip on the bat. Whitey now has started more World Series games than any pitcher in history. In the red second inning, Ford pitches to Gene Freeze, who slams a hard smash toward third. It looks like a base hit, but Pete Boyer makes a brilliant play, a breathtaking stop. With quick hands, he recovers in time to turn it into an easy out at first base. It's the first great play of the series, and the crowd gives the young third baseman a big hand. In the Yankees' fourth, Jim O'Toole whips a strike past Elston Howard. But Howard finds the next delivery more to his liking. He drives an outside pitch toward right field. Wally Post charges across to the barrier, but he's a little too late and a little too short. It drops in there for a home run. Howard circles the bases with the first run of the series. Howard is up again in the sixth and hammers a long drive to center. But Beta Pinson, with his great speed, races back and hauls it down with finesse. O'Toole faces Scarron. He slams a long drive to deep left field. Frank Robinson takes one look, starts drifting back, but the ball is going, going, it's gone. And there's a mad scramble. Scarron scores with his seventh World Series homer, and the Yankees lead two to nothing. In the Reds' eighth inning, pinch hitter Dick Gurnett pounds a hard shot down the line. But again, watch this. Boyer makes a miraculous diving catch to beat back the bid for a base hit. He throws perfectly to first base. How about that? This is the breathtaking sort of play that makes baseball the thrilling sport it is. Now in the Reds' ninth, Jerry Lynch bats for Don Blassingame, and Whitey Ford retires him on an easy pop fly to Cleet Boyer. Eddie Casco is next. Ford works on him carefully. Casco hits a ground ball to short. Tony Kubek comes up with it. Here's the throw on to first base, and it's in time for the out. Now only Pinson stands between Ford and one of his greatest triumphs. Benson lifts a soft pop fly to Kubek. The ball game is over, and the Yankees win two to nothing. Ford has his third straight World Series shutout, his eighth series victory for a new record, and he also is closing in on Babe Ruth's mark of 29 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. 
The Reds seem unworried about that opening setback as they take batting practice. Happy Warriors warming up for the second game are Elston Howard, who hit a homer in the opener, Bill Scarron, who also homered, and Boyer, the defensive magician. Warren Giles, National League president, radiates faith in the Reds. Joey Jay, Cincinnati's starting pitcher, talks it over with manager Hutchinson. It's a beautiful fall day, and the fans again are out early. Jay, now warming up, burst into stardom with 21 victories this year. Ralph Terry, 16-3 for the season, will start for New York. And another near-capacity crowd awaits the first pitch. Elio Chacon lets a long fly ball to left field. Yogi Berra runs over near the running track and makes the catch. With one out in the Cincinnati fourth, Terry pitches to Frank Robinson. There's a twisting hopper. It caroms off Boyer's glove, and the young third baseman has trouble recovering it. Robinson is safe at first. Gordy Coleman at bat takes Terry's first pitch for a strike. Again, Terry delivers, but this time Coleman really levels. There's a terrific shot deep to right center. It's going, going, it is gone. A solid home run of more than 400 feet. Robinson scores ahead of Coleman and has both returned to a jubilant Cincinnati dugout. The Reds have taken a 2 to nothing lead. In the Yankee fourth, Roger Maris draws a walk. And for Jay, that brings up the problem of Yogi Berra. There's a drive to deep right field. It's going, going, it is gone. Well back into the seats for a home run. Maris drops in ahead of Yogi, and within a matter of minutes, the game is tied again at 2-2. It was Barra's 12th series home run. With two out in the Reds' fifth, Chacon hits a looping fly ball to center that drops in there for a base hit. Terry now faces Eddie Casco. Eddie slams a base hit through the middle. Maris charges the ball, cuts loose with a tremendous throw to third base, trying to flag down the speedy Chacon, but he's in there safely. Now a crucial play. With Benson at bat, a pitch gets away from Howard for a short pass ball, and Chacon suddenly storms home, and he's safe. Umpire Jocko Conlon calls the play. And now after they get untangled, let's take another look at this vital play. Chacon takes a long, leaping slide, and Howard just doesn't quite make it. And the Reds lead 3-2 to two on Chacon's aggressive running. And the Yankee fifth, Leap Boyer at bat draws a walk. And after one man has been retired, Bobby Richardson is at the plate. He grounds to short. Casco attempts to start a double play by tossing the ball to Chacon, but Boyer beats the throw to the bag. Boyer is called safe at second. And Chacon's throw to first is wild. Manager Hutchinson questions umpire Donatelli very briefly on the play and soon heads back to the bench. Joey Jay doesn't let the situation disturb him, though. He strikes out Tony Kubek. Roger Maris is now at bat. One swing could ruin Joey, but he strikes out Maris, and Rog walks off in disgust. In the Cincinnati sixth inning, Frank Robinson slams another hot shot into the third base sector, but the Yankee Gibraltar is there again. Watch. Boyer makes a sensational backhanded stab near the line. Leaps to his feet for the throw to first base. 
and another frustrated red is out on an unbelievable play. Wally Post manages to circumvent Boyer here. He gets the ball up high enough so that it sails down the left field line for an extra base hit. Barra runs it down, and Post trots easily into second base with a double. Gene Freese has walked intentionally with two out, the Yankees preferring to pitch to John Edwards. But Edwards, who hit a 186 during the season, upsets the strategy by driving a base hit to right field. Wally Post scores, and Cincinnati leads 4-2. Luis Arroyo, ace Yankee pitcher, relieves in the eighth inning and walks Robinson to start the inning. Arroyo now faces Gordy Coleman. Coleman taps a little dribbler to the left of the mound. Arroyo moves over to field the ball. Coleman beats it for a hit, and Arroyo's wild throw sails down the right field line. Blanchard finally retrieves it, and since Robinson already is scoring, tries to nail Coleman digging for third. A beautiful throw, Boyer slaps the ball on the big first baseman for the out. Pitches to post, and Wally hits a hard sinking liner. Straight at Yogi Berra in left field. Watch. Oops, it goes right through his mitts for an error. And Yogi has to run it down while Post rambles on to third base. For the second time in the game, Freeze is purposely passed to get at Edwards. But this time, the Cincinnati catcher lifts a little pop fly over Boyer's head, and again, the strategy explodes. It's a double scoring post, and the Reds pull away 6-2. to two. Howard leads off for the Yankees in the ninth inning, and he's out for interference when his bat hits the ball a second time. Howard argues about it, and manager Hauk comes out to protest, but umpire Conlon prevails as he cites the rule. Jay strikes out Bill Scarron, and the Yankees, with just one out left, have Cleet Boyer back, and Boyer draws a walk to keep their hopes alive in the last of the ninth. Ralph Hout sends up Billy Gardner to bat for Arroyo. Gardner lines to Casco, and the Reds triumph six to two. It was a superb four-hit performance by Jay. Other key factors were Coleman's homer and the alert base running of Chacon. It ties the series at one victory each, and the scene now shifts to Cincinnati. Cincinnati, the very cradle of professional baseball. Here, the first salaried team, the Red Stockings, was formed in 1868, and Cincinnati has been a baseball hotbed ever since. Down through the years, there echo the names of such red heroes as Roush, Lukey, Rixey, Walters, Vandermeer, and Blackwell. And no fans anywhere are more enthusiastic than these now converging on Crosley Field. With Hutchinson is the Reds' official family, Mr. and Mrs. Stanley Kess and General Manager Bill DeWitt. Mr. Kess is a club director. Mrs. Kess is the daughter of Powell Crosley, late Cincinnati owner. Bill DeWitt is the first head baseball executive ever win a pennant in both major leagues. Mickey Mantle, suffering from a hip wound, will make his first appearance in the series, a courageous performer. The rival managers, Freddie Hutchinson and Ralph Houck, chat briefly before the third game. Bill Stafford, only 23, will start for the Yankees, and Bob Perkey, a veteran knuckleballer, is Cincinnati's mound choice. All action stops for the national anthem. There go the Reds, and the fight for the series lead is on. As the game moves into the third, Chacon lays down a bunt. Stafford tries to hurry the play, throws so wildly that Scourin has no chance to catch the ball.
Chacon immediately races for second and makes it easily. The rabid Red Rooters are whooping it up. With two out, Frank Robinson lines a hit the left. It bounces off the wall on the first hop for a double. Chacon trots on home with the first run of the ball game. Turkey still is protecting his one nothing edge as he faces Kubek in the seventh. Tony whistles a line drive to center field and it's in there for a base hit. With one away, Mickey Mantle is at the plate. He lifts a high foul pop near the Reds dugout. Johnny Edwards gives chase. He gives a tremendous effort, slides on into the dugout. A great try, but he fails to get the ball. Now Perky returns to the task of pitching the mantle. He tries to give Mickey his best knuckleball. The pitch breaks so sharply, gets away from Edwards for a passed ball, and Kubek moves to second. Now Perky's situation is more perilous with the runner in scoring position, but he knuckles down. And Mickey Mantle strikes out. There are two away. But then comes another toughie by the name of Yogi Berra. Yogi lifts a looping fly ball to short right field. Chacon races out. Robinson races in. Chacon seems to have the ball, but he and Robinson collide. And the ball drops, and Kubek trots on home to tie the score. On a rerun, we see that the collision did not knock the ball out of Chacon's glove. He dropped it before the impact. Undoubtedly distracted by the onrushing Robinson. A tough play for both men. Chacon was badly shaken up by the collision. However, he pulls himself together and remains in the ballgame. In the Cincinnati seventh with one out, Stafford faces John Edwards. He slams the ball into the right field corner. Johnny Blanchard runs it down and cuts loose with the throw to second base. Edwards, racing all the way, slides into second, safely with a double. With two out, Jerry Lynch bats for Chacon and draws an intentional pass. Don Blassengame goes in to run for him. Cincinnati shortstop Eddie Casco at bat. And he lines his thing on the left field. Yogi Berra has no play at the plate, fires to the infield. And the Reds are back in front, 2-1, to one, as Edwards scores. The run sends the crowd into an uproar, and they're dancing in the aisles by a couple of pretty young ladies. Perky retires the first two Yankees in the eighth, then faces Blanchard, batting for Bud Daly. Blanchard swings at the first pitch and sends a towering fly deep to right field. Frank Robinson goes back, but the ball sails over the bleacher fence for a pinch hit home run. And the score is deadlocked again at 2-2. But pinch homers aren't anything new to this budding new star of the Yankees. Blanchard hit four of them during the season. Now Roger Maris leads off in the Yankee ninth with the score tied at 2-2. Maris takes a strike. And then with a count, two balls and one strike, Bob Perky prepares to pitch. Maris set at the plate. There's a long drive going to deep right field. It's going, going, it is gone. A home run for Roger Maris. His first hit of the series and 11 times at bat. But it couldn't have been a bigger one as it sends the Yankees into a 3-2 lead. After Arroyo retires Dean Freeze in the ninth, Leo Cardenas steps up as a pinch hitter for Edwards. There's a long drive to deep left field. It crashes high off the scoreboard for a double. If it had been on either side of the scoreboard, it would have been a game-tying homer. 
For the tying run now in scoring position, pinch hitter Dick Gurnett pushes a slow bouncer near second base. Kubek picks it up, makes a fine throw to first base to retire the batter while Cardenas holds second. Gus Bell, third successive pinch hitter, smashes the ball back at Arroyo. He knocks it down and throws him out at first base. And the Yankees win 3-2 for a 2-1 series edge. Arroyo, a spectacular 15-game relief winner during the season, gets the victory. While homers by Blanchard and Maris wreck a gallant performance by Bob Perky. Blue skies and balmy weather prevail for the fourth game. Joe Cronin, popular president of the American League, is quietly confident. John Blanchard tries out his home run swing. Maris also tries to stay in the groove. Jim O'Toole, who lost the opener, will challenge the Yankees again. And his mound foe will be the same Whitey Ford. The umpires and managers have their usual pregame huddle for exchange of lineup cards. And game four is ready to roll. Gordy Coleman opens the Cincinnati third by grounding out to Richardson. And Ford, needing another scoreless inning to break Babe Ruth's record, now needs just two more outs. But Darrell Johnson singles to left for the first hit off Whitey. And the crowd begins to wonder whether Ford will make it. Jim O'Toole is the next batter. He grounds to Tony Kubek, a slow hopper, but Tony makes a fine play, tosses to Richardson for a force out of Johnson at second base. Now Ford is only one out away from a new record of consecutive World Series scoreless innings. Elio Chacon is the man he must retire. Chacon grounds to Richardson, who throws him out, and that makes 30 straight scoreless innings. Whitey Ford, the little lefty with a big heart, has shattered one of Babe Ruth's most cherished records. Maris opens the Yankee fourth, drawing a walk. Mickey Mantle at bat grits his teeth as he fights back intense pain in his hip. And this plucky performer smashes a sizzling line shot to left center that has both Pinson and Post in hot pursuit. And Maris takes third. Manager Hawk decides that the courageous mantle has gone as far as he can, removes Mickey from the game, and Hector Lopez goes in to run for him. With two on and nobody out, Elston Howard comes to bat. He bounces to Casco, who starts a fast double play, but Mara scores and the Yankees lead one to nothing. Brosnan pitching now for Cincinnati. After the Yankees added a run in the fifth, Howard, with one out in the sixth, slams Brosnan's first pitch to right center for a resounding double. Barra, one of the game's best clutch hitters, is walked intentionally. And the crowd seems to approve. Scowlin fails to fall into the double play trap, beats out a slow roller to Freese, and the bases are loaded. Brosnan now faces Cleet Boyer. The Yankee third baseman slams the ball down the left field line for an extra base hit. It bounces off the wall before Post can retrieve it. It's a double. Howard and Barra come pounding home, and the Yankee lead is lengthened to four to nothing. After that outburst, the Reds' bullpen gets busy. Whitey Ford still has a shutout in the Cincinnati sixth when Chacon hits a liner to left. Yogi Berra tries for a shoestring catch but narrowly misses it. Umpire Shag Crawford right on top of the play. Manager Hout, meanwhile, goes to the mound to talk to Ford who had smashed a foul off his foot batting earlier. And so Jim Coates is called in from the bullpen to relieve the veteran. And Ford departs with a fabulous streak of 32 consecutive scoreless innings. Coates helps keep that record alive.
Brosnan pitches to Bobby Richardson, opening the Yankees' seventh. It's a base hit to left center. In his haste to cut off the ball, Pinson fumbles it, and Richardson races on to second. It was the eighth hit of the series for Bobby. With one out, Maris is walked. Brosnan then unleashes a wild pitch in his effort to shackle the power of Lopez, and both runners advance. Richardson moves to third, and Maris goes to second. Lopez lashes a single to center field, and both Bobby Richardson and Roger Maris are driven home. Since Lopez moved to second on the throw, Yogi Berra, who is the next batter, is intentionally passed. Bill Scarron up. He slams a shot off Jim's leg that bounces into center field, scoring Lopez. Vinson races in, fires to third, trying to cut down Berra. Yogi hits the dirt, but he's out on a perfect throw. The Yankees scored three times in the inning. Bustling Bobby Richardson makes a bid for another hit, but Chacon makes a brilliant leaping catch of his line drive. How about that? With one out in the Reds' ninth, Frankie Robinson at bat, draws a walk. Bobby is only the second man to reach base since Coates relieved Ford. And then Gene Freeze strikes out. Coates now needs only one more out to preserve the shutout. And he gets it as Coleman lifts a high routine fly to Lopez. The ball game is over and the Yankees win 7-0 to take a commanding 3-1 margin in the series. Ford once again proved a complete mystery to the Reds. And his collaborator Jim Coates was just as baffling. Crosley Field, the Cincinnati Reds, down three games to one, hope to stay alive in the series. But Yankee co-owner Dan Topping hopes his team will wind it up. And so do these two gentlemen, General Manager Roy Haney of the Yankees and co-owner Del Webb. Pre-game practice finds the Yankees keeping their batting eyes sharpened. Cincinnati's Frank Robinson is trying to recover his slugging stroke. And so is star Cincinnati center fielder Beta Pinson. Joey J, Cincinnati's only series winner, will try to halt the Yankees team roller. Ralph Terry, who lost to Jay in the second game, will be matched against him again, and he'd like to turn the tables. For Jay, he knows there's no tomorrow unless he can win today. Bobby Richardson, most prolific hitter of the last two World Series, opens the game with a single. It's his ninth hit. With two out and Richardson on second, Jay encounters John Blanchard. After a 3-1 count, Blanchard delivers a long drive to deep right field. It's going, going, it's gone. That's the second home run of the series for Johnny Blanchard, who scores behind Richardson to send the Yankees away to a quick lead. Jay's next pitch is slammed by Elston Howard against the scoreboard for a double. It was the fifth hit of the series for the star catcher, who paced the Yankees during the season with a 348 average. Jay, so effective the last time, is shaken up. The count goes to three and two against Bill Scarron, who rifles a terrific shot off the center field wall. The ball rebounds so fast, it gets past Pinson as Howard scores. Manager Freddie Hutchinson decides to make a pitching change and calls in Jim Maloney, a 21-year-old fastballer. The first man facing Maloney is Hector Lopez. 
Lopez drills the ball deep into the right field corner. It's in there for extra bases. Scallon scores to give the Yankees their fourth run as Lopez winds up for the triple. There's no slowing down of the Bronx Bombers. Cletus Boyer doubles off the scoreboard for the fourth extra base hit of the inning. Lopez scores and the Yankees lead five to nothing. Still Cincinnati fans keep faith as this one does gazing at the team picture. Brassing game opens the Reds third after the Yankees had scored again in the second. He slaps the ball through the middle for a single to center. Ralph Terry goes to work on Eddie Casco, who hits a short pop fly to left field. Hector Lopez races in but can't quite get to it. It's a base hit, and blasting game races all the way to third. That brings up Frank Robinson, and Robbie wastes no time. There's a long drive deep to right center field. Blanchard sprints back, but the ball is into the bleachers for a three-run home run. Cincinnati fans take renewed hope and feel they're back in the game as Blassing Game and Casco trot home. Frank Robinson gets a warm reception from his teammates. At this point, manager Ralph Houck decides to bring in relief pitcher Bud Daly to replace Ralph Terry. And the Cincinnati threat is soon ended. The base was loaded in the Yankee fourth with the reliever Bill Henry who entered the game in the third pitching for Cincinnati. Bill Scarron is at bat. Scarron smashes a single to center field. Kubek and Branchard head for home. Simpson unleashes a long throw to the plate that sails high over the catcher's head. Kubek and Blanchard score. Hector Lopez now comes up. Lopez really ties into one. A tremendous blast that rockets high over the wall to the right of the scoreboard for a tremendous home run. Several fans scramble up an embankment in pursuit of the ball. Howard and Scowlin score ahead of Lopez, and the Yankees are turning it into a rout with an 11-3 margin. In the Cincinnati fifth inning, Bud Daly pitching to Beta Pinson, who cracks a hit to center. But in his eagerness to utilize his speed, he tries to stretch the hit into a double and is out at second on a good throw by Maris. With Coleman on first and two out, Wally Post ties into one and sends it soaring into the left field screen for a home run. <laughs> Coleman and Post got home and the Reds cut the Yankee margin to 13 to five. Chacon bats for blasting game in the Reds' ninth. He grounds to short, and Tony Kubek throws him out. Daly's control is excellent. Casco swings at his first pitch and lifts a fly ball to Roger Maris. Daly is now on the brink of victory. Pinson represents the final gasp for the Reds. He tries to check his swing on Daly's first pitch, lifts a pop fly to left. But Lopez gathers in and it's all over. The Yankees win 13 to 5 and once again are world champions. Every World Series has its great moments and the 1961 series is no exception. Explosive hitting of a Maris, a Robinson, or a Mantle. Brilliant pitching of a Ford or a Jay. Baseline thrills. Sensational fielding, 
That's baseball at its best.